All right, these are two vintage portable ringer washers that I want to take a video of, and well, some people will probably really enjoy this. Uh, first, I want to apologize if the video quality doesn't come out too good because I'm doing this with my laptop. Because, well, I need two hands to actually show the ringer. And I'm not really sure how much good the quality on this on the camera for this is because I haven't used this for quite a long time to take a video. It's also kind of hard for me to see what I'm aiming at. There they are. The one on the left is branded as a handy hot. You can see that. And the other one is a Kenmore. They are exactly identical. The internal guts are all the same. Uh, handy hot is actually the maker of the Kenmore. The Kenmore is dated for 1954, August 1954. No, here, let's buy the power cord. I don't know, you can really see that. It's August of 1954. The other one, though it doesn't have a date on it from what I found online, it's probably about 19, 1948, I think, or somewhere late 40s. So figure, this is 62 years old, that one's almost 70 years old, and they both still work. I only have the one ringer. That ringer actually came with that one, which is the reason I actually bought the second one. I bought this one with the intention of washing greasy, oily, whatever, shop towels as well. I didn't need a full-size machine like this. And I didn't like the look of all the plastic in the new portable washers with all the electronics and garbage and crap that probably would just catch on fire anyway. So I bought this one and so that's the whole reason behind having these. The ringer is just a simple hand crank ringer. It's actually, with these nubs here, it just screws tightens onto the uh, tub if you take the lid off. I'll show you the inside in a minute. The little adjustment on the top here is actually to apply tension to the rollers. The tighter it is, the more water you get out. And then just the standard, just the basic handle. Wooden handle. This. It's all metal. So I had to open up this one because I don't have anything in this one right now. Let's see how this is. It's got a, uh, like a spline on it. And then, here's the agitator. It drives, it's driven from the top. Yeah, I don't know if it shows up too well, but there, oh it does. This is the, uh, the water fill line. Tells you how far to fill it up when you actually set it in there. It just kind of sits in the bottom. Uh, and that little nub down at the bottom, little nub here. It's kind of an interesting looking agitator. Not the typical one that you would find in a regular washer. I do have an owner's manual for this that I found on eBay uh, sometime after I had bought these. Both of these came from eBay, not from like a thrift store or anything. It's really easy to find these things on eBay though. People, Some people want a ridiculous amount of money for something that's this old. Uh, it actually says the agitator is all aluminum. I would imagine the, uh, the tub on this will be stainless steel. And then the Kenmore one, it's porcelain enamel on steel. The only plastic parts on this washer are the handles the timer knob, and the housing for the timer. Everything else is metal. Uh, the timer actually does not use power to run. The timer doesn't use power to actually count down. I don't know if you can hear it, but it is actually counting down. Uh, the old one, the older one, is exactly the same. Everything's the same. Uh, I plan on actually taking a separate video on the internal guts of these. that one back down. Get the manual here. It's actually just on top of this washer. It 
So this one is uh, for the Kenmore. Someone had bought it in 59, and I guess uh, they didn't need it anymore, or their washer died or something. It actually tells you what will all fit in here. It says four men's shirts, eight short, eight seven or eight shorts and undershirts, diapers, four large bath towels, and so on. And actually goes over how to actually lubricate the internals of this, which is why I'm going to do a uh, separate video to show you like what all what all actually is inside. Probably a little bit better than what you can see in the picture. Yes, this is the automatic. Most of you probably wouldn't like this thing. Actually, most of you probably don't like it. Um, this is the electronic crap. It has all that. You know, these cycles that take like an hour. Just stupid. But believe it or not, this thing is about 10 years old, I want to say. And it still has all the original parts in it. It hasn't needed serviced yet. In this one, if I can get it open with one hand, on this one the uh, the gasket kind of broke because I did actually open this one to maintenance it. I don't know, maybe it had a crack or something that I just didn't notice, or was dry rotted in that one area for some reason. Because that one, the seal on this one is all in one piece. Even though it looks like it's in worse shape than uh, this one. This one I have just a bunch of these little towels in it. It's the same agitator. Which actually came out of place when I took the lid off. Kind of sucked. There you go. I got 12 of these little uh, hand towels in here. Like what you'd use in the kitchen. These ones are just old. They were sitting on the other side of the dryer there in a bag. So I figured I'll just throw some of these in to fill it. Literally. Under a faucet. And turn it on. That's literally it. Uh, I didn't put any soap in yet. I have it sitting over here right in front of the dryer. I'll show you what I got. I have powder detergent. And there's the, uh, the bag where those towels came from. I have Tide with bleach, and I have all. Uh, I have actually used this stuff. I use this when I do my shock towels because I need the bleach and all that other crap to get all the oil and shit out. There's this nice big scoop. It's it's white with a uh, little bit of blue stuff in it, and this is just for lighter stuff. It's just plain white. I have washed actually regular clothes in there before with no problem. I've actually used an entire scoopful of this and that and only ever needed to do one rinse. That's how good it actually works. So, even though I don't really need to use it, because they were really clean already, just sitting over there for however long. God, I hope this is still recording. And just put it in. And we'll let it fill to the max fill, or the water line. And it says it's still recording, so. Usually I'd, I'd use my phone to take videos, but again, since I need like two hands to demonstrate the ringer, that's why I'm using my laptop here. I apologize, again, I apologize for the less than desirable cam work because I really can't see where this is aiming at. Maybe next time I, uh, there goes the pump. Seems it shuts off. Yeah. Yeah, we'll just let this fill up. Yeah, we don't have city water here. It's well in cistern. Uh, the cistern is the pump you just heard. It's that big black pump. Uh, there's two tanks outside the house that just draws water from. 
Uh, we use that to do laundry and everything else. See, this is almost full. And I'm actually gonna have to set the laptop down to put the lid on because you have to line the spline up with this or else it won't work right. All mechanical, it can't, no bullshit, they can't tell you like you can only use water that's this hot, you can only do a cold rinse, you can do as many hot rinses as you want. Any water, really any water level you want, but it works best with a full tub. And we're just about there. And I would say that was full. Actually, maybe a little bit above the water line. It does say in the manual that it uses, it takes about five and a half gallons to fill it up. Um, now the way it says that you're supposed to load this up is you're supposed to put the water and soap in first, let it agitate for a minute or two to build up suds, and then put, your, and then put whatever you're washing in it. Um, I just put the stuff in it, put soap in it, and fill it up, and then go with it. It's, it hasn't caused a problem for me. Let's put that over there. Yeah, it's never been a problem for me unless you're washing something real heavy in it. But the only problem with washing like something heavy like a pair of jeans or a real heavy sweatshirt is there is absolutely no way you're gonna get something that heavy through that little ringer. This thing is, at best, probably a seven or eight inch ringer. There's no way it'll actually go through there. You can keep cranking it, and the uh, it'll ju it'll just slip. The stop, stop. The top roller will actually just stay stationary because this thing works well just on friction. The tighter it is, the better it works. And there's only so much you can tighten up on this. So really, I either need to find a full-sized ringer or some vintage um, extractor. And I haven't been able to find any vintage extractors nor have I been able to find or rather I don't like the um, the plastic one so that's kind of what's holding me back from buying a new one anyway I'll set this down and put the lid on put this back on the floor I really hope this video turns out alright trying to find a way to um, either fix this seal or see if I can get a new one at some point because it looks like it's cracking in another place now or starting to Uh, the power cord is actually a replacement. I don't remember if I still have the original cord or not. It might be upstairs hiding somewhere. But this was originally a 10-foot um, a extension cord. I just cut the other end off of it and left it long enough to use as a longer cord. Unlike a normal ringer washer, plugging it in doesn't turn the motor on. It's controlled by the timer here, which is actually something nice about this. When the timer runs out, it, it actually set, cuts the motor off. This one still has its original cord. Uh, it wasn't the same kind as this. It had actually like screws on top where you can actually see the wires. Where the wires actually screwed onto like terminals and then you had the two prongs. Yeah, I got rid of that because that thing wasn't really safe. And I figure like uh, this is old. It was old. It's like I don't really trust it too much. It works fine, but for as old as it was, like, yeah, I could put something better on that. Plus, I kind of wanted a longer cord anyway. Make it easier to reach outlets. 
the original cord also didn't have a uh, ground hookup like this one does. The ground inside isn't hooked up to anything, it's just cut off. I just cut the ground wire off since there's nowhere to attach it anyway. Pop that cord out of the way. And to start it, basically just turned on. I'm gonna take a second to get one. There you go. And that's what it sounds like. It uses 90 watts of power, or that's what it says on the uh, little inspect, the little piece of metal thing over there with the day. It says it uses 90 watts of power. The timer doesn't draw any power. Let's see, one horsepower I think is 746 watts. So this is, I think it's either one seventh or one eighth horsepower. The motor goes into a reduction gearbox. It's worm gear to helical gear. The gears are all metal. It's a sealed gearbox. You can, and if you want to open it up, and check the grease or replace the grease. It's very easy. I'll show that in another video. This is just of this washing. I'd leave the lid open, but again, since it's driven from the top, I really can't do that. And I don't have a way to extend the. Um, between the agitator and the actual drive shaft on that. I actually measured it and it's, it's the drive shaft coming out of this is 5 8 So if I could just make some kind of 5 8 extension for that, it's like a foot long or something, so I can actually leave the lid open to watch it. If I get around, if I figure out something for that, I'll certainly make a video of it uh, like that. The book for the, the one that mentions here actually talks about the machine having a uh, drain, which is right because it'd be on the uh, front here. Or on this one, it'd be like somewhere like on the front. It's just a little uh, screw type thing. You loosen it and it drains the water out, and you tighten it, it seals it back up. Uh, these models don't have that, but what I'd like to do is find find one of these that has the drain in the front and actually set up something permanent over here and rig up a drain pump and everything so it can actually be used like a regular washer and I just maintenance it whenever I need to and it would just come out and drain into the uh, tub over here okay it just clicked I don't know if you heard it but it did just click oh I got it Managed to unlock it looking at the keyboard upside down, surprisingly. Yeah, it was about the last, oh, I'd say a minute and a half, it clicked. I'm not really sure what the purpose of the click is. I would assume, they probably assumed that you would be down here, or, excuse me, uh, sitting down here with the machine or something, or perhaps you would be doing something else, and the click was just to indicate, like, hey, this is going to be done shortly. Pay attention or something of the sort. That's about the only thing that makes sense to me as to why I would do that. Uh, cosmetically, they're really, really need to be repainted. The insides are, the insides are fine. The internal guts of the two, this one and that one. At some point though, I would actually like to repaint these. I'll cover all this stuff up with tape, the vent holes, all that. And I'll actually re repaint them something nice, a nice white. The motor inside here, and that's the reason the vent holes here, uh, there is actually a fan on the motor to help keep it cool. So if you were actually here, you could. this actually does get warm on top. And there you go. All right, I have to put this down on the floor. Set this down because I need two hands to pick this up. Well, the water was actually dirty. For something that was supposed to be clean, I guess this really does work pretty damn good. Far better than that. I'm not surprised.
old vintage things generally work better than new crap the newer crappy garbage they sell you today anyway Maybe it's a good thing I used all that soap in it. Even looks like there's little bits of oil and grease that were in in these too. And there shouldn't be because I'd never used these to wash shop towels or anything. Unless it was just crap that was somehow still in here. Even though I rinse I always rinse this thing out when I'm done with it. That's pretty good. I just always pull this out. Another reason I want to get the uh, the one with the drain and fit it with a pump because turn this sideways. What had happened here? I don't know how well it shows up, but what happened here was I picked it up and I was moving it, and I actually I accidentally dropped it right on the handle, so that got broken. And if you can see it, some of the uh, porcelain enamel was actually chipped off over here. On that and this upper lip. It actually did bend the tub, but being the good product that it was made back in the day, I had to do, all I had to do was just bend it back and it's fine. The lid fits just like it's supposed to. No problems. The uh, power piece wasn't didn't get dropped out. Because again, you have to always take that off. You tighten this up. I always tighten it up to max to get the most out. Dehumidifiers in a way. Now I'm not sure how they wanted you to actually rinse this. If the idea was to put it into like your like a kitchen into the kitchen sink or put it back into here and actually rinse it, because this is really like an apartment size travel thing. No, you could use it for regular home use if you got real small loads. I've always just put this stuff, filled this back up with just clean water for a rinse and just put them all back in here. No problem. But I think if I definitely set one up down here uh, to be used just whenever you really need it, I think I might actually go ahead and buy the um, extractor thing. Even though it's Chinese, I'll go ahead and buy it anyway. It'd be a lot easier than trying to use one of these hand crank ringers. Actually, I'm going to put the other one in the sink and actually let it fill up with water. I'm going to use that one to do the rinse. Kind of see what it looks like when it's full. With top on. We're still recording, that's good. And then, yeah, because I'm, I'm not sure if this actually has a, uh, a limit to how much I can record or not. So it rinse. It's five minutes. Sounds pretty much identical to the other one. Maybe a little more planking with the agitator in this one. It might be just a little bit more worn out. We were just about done on this. It already clicked. 
So whenever it hits zero, or maybe just slightly past that. I don't remember if I stated this or not, but they were both made in Chicago, Illinois, USA. The newest version of this machine that I have found, or that I've seen on eBay, was in 1968. It had a plastic agitator, a plastic tub. I think the top part was still the same. I think it was still metal. The internal guts more than likely would have been the same, probably. Because why would they have? I don't really see why they would have a reason to change that on something like this. But it did have the drain in the front. I saw it, but I never bought it. I kind of like the metal ones better anyway. So, I have to unplug this one and set it down on the floor because it has a uh, the much shorter power cord. Mm -hmm. A lot less crap in this one, in the uh, rinse, as compared to the wash. Since these ones don't have the drain in them, it's just a simple uh, dump it out in a sink or out in the yard or wherever you're using it. Whatever's convenient and easy to get rid of the water. Generally, I use these things out in the shed, so I just dump the water out in the grass. It's never bothered the grass, it's never killed anything. So for all you environmentally friendly people, uh, this soap isn't hurting shit. I wouldn't really say it was environmentally friendly soap because it has bleach in it, but it's never killed the grass. Okay, the dryer because they're going in here. 